Services. And uh, before we actually head into uh, the Hamish Chigundu book review, uh, it is time to head into our topic. And our topic today, as we're going to analyze it a bit, is the stationary business in Uganda. The stationary business is one that has actually uh, seemed to be promising in, uh, in, times, in times when university students are back. Back in the time before the pandemic hit, uh, you could only tell uh, that it was one of the businesses that was making a lot of money. Most of the people who center uh, these stationary businesses put them next to the universities, either on the streets next to the university gate or inside of the university premises because there is money. A number of students come for photocopying, a number of students uh, go out there uh, to the, these particular when they want different uh, scholastic materials. Look at the pens, look at the pencils, look at the rulers. And not only that, also look at uh, the rim of paper that they will be looking at. So most probably it's because most of them uh, get to look for all the opportunities uh, that they can use uh, to utilize at such a moment. So that is where the stationary business has grown has actually grown here in Uganda. Most people are getting used uh, to the narrative of uh, saying that it is one of those businesses that makes a lot of money once universities are open. But the things have changed so badly and so intense, I would say. But of course, uh, before we actually even dive into that analysis, how about if you follow us on our social media platforms, Smart24TV on Twitter and on Facebook at Smart24TV. The website is www.smart24tv.com and our official YouTube is Smart24TV uh, Space Live. We are streaming, but remember to hit the subscription button as well. If you want to advertise with us, it is Plot29A Commercial Road in Naguru. Though I must admit that we are soon shifting, but we'll still let you know of our new offices. But still, you can come here and advertise with us and let's drive your business together as we head into a discussion still. Okay, let's start from there. When COVID came through, universities had to close down. Not to close down operation completely because the online platforms were open and the universities had to turn to online services, with most of them having students out of the country, others having students in the country still. So the opportunity that was arising was there for the, universe, for the students to actually uh, get uh, back to studying. But the businesses that were greatly affected, look at the restaurant businesses around the universities. Those are some of those businesses. But there is no way you can mention businesses around the universities or schools in Uganda and forget the stationary business. In one of the stories that we've had, the stationary dealers have actually mentioned something that on a good day, for instance, in Nakawa, Nakawa's got uh, the Makere University Business School. They've also got the Nakawa Institute of, uh, for the Teachers and uh, Vocational Institute still there. They say that on a good day, they can actually earn up to 3 million Ugandan shillings. So you can only imagine how much uh, 3 million Ugandan shillings can actually do for you on a day. Uh, to beat the rent areas you have maybe at home when you're renting, and only that, look at uh, where you're renting at your works in your workspace, and all of that is the details that you need to actually look at on board through. But not only if uh, you can actually turn away from the fact that that is also available, let's also focus on the idea that businesses like stationery were greatly affected during COVID. Why? The students were not there. And when the students are not there, there is no way, uh, the only advantage that they have is that they have stationary things. Like you definitely hear, stationary, they are stationary. So this is where you can definitely see. And the rim of paper, rim of paper is guahongo sumula yolo papula budu naku no bango kozisa. So you can definitely see their business only has an advantage in tebintu ya bisi garau. 
even for a, they have a durability for some good time. But away from that, Baba de Tebakola, they've not been working. Students are not reporting to school, uh, universities, because these are the students. students, Baba de Tebakola photocopy, de Tebakola notes, Baba de Tebakola printing work. Baba de Baja Nebagula rim, Nebaja Nebagula envelopes, Nebaja Nebagula pens, you know, all those scholastic materials. I tell you, Runak Baba Banji Baba Baweda, because these universities that we're speaking about are having over thousands and thousands of students in there. So when you have universities having over 5,000 and you're working in an area which has over 5,000 universities, now in the area of Nakawa, over two institutions, close to three uh, institutions there only teaching so there is money if at all the students are there so what if the students are not there then there, that means there is no money whatsoever so that is where we are telling you people that life hits us differently and the same applies to people uh, dealing in the businesses at the universities in the schools because we've always been telling the government that uh, school proprietors are being affected with the fact that they're not making money or not working but there are also other stakeholders in the education sector behind the scenes who are facilitating all the things that you see and among which the stationary business. So the money that the stationary business makes during uh, the semester is more than they can make off semester because their target market is the students. That is why most of them are centered next to the universities and the higher institutions of learning. So in that one or the other, it is one of those businesses that have actually really been affected out there. Uh, but with time to time, with the fact that some of the universities resume with face-to-face -face interactions or face-to-face -face lectures, you can easily tell that, yes, most of them are, ca are catching up. Most of these businesses are, yes, are moving on polar and polar. And uh, they, are, they are good to go so far. So far, so good, if I am to say. So, but away from that still, look at uh, the opportunities that are actually rising uh, from uh, the different angles and uh, the different scenarios still. It is because we are looking at uh, these uh, visions and uh, looking at these issues differently. But that is not all. How are they going to survive? Because on a day, someone has to be really versatile with the stationary business because you need to understand everything there where the things got where the books got how do you type this 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 everything and also so with that uh, we are throwing it into a broader picture this is a business that if at all the university is re fully reopen just like before the pre-pandemic levels these people are going to make more money than they're actually making now because currently there is limited attendance at the universities because of the standard operating procedures. Back then there were students who were doing evening classes, there were students who were doing um, day classes, day lectures. Things are changing now because we have curfew. There is no way someone is going to do evening when you're commuting. So. That is why it is actually limiting the evening classes. It is actually limiting one of uh, the, it's just limiting a lot of, of people out there. Okay, and uh, away from that, if we're to speak about stationary business, it is wide. It is something that we can continuously speak about, but it's one that has greatly uh, been affected uh, greatly by the pandemic. And you should definitely know that uh, with time to time, they may actually pick up if the university is fully reopened. Uh, but with the fact that some universities are still operating with online lectures, some students ought, uh, opt to stay home or at their workplaces to continue with studies rather than going to the universities uh, to fit in there because more expenses are coming in there. Okay, away from our topic of analysis, it is time to go into our book review. It is the reason as the world is masterpiece. And we are continuing from where we did stop last week. Reason as the World is Masterpiece is a book written by Hamis Chigundu. Hamis Chigundu is an author, and he's as well as the edit editor of this particular one, and as well as the publisher. 
Speaking of editing, of being the author and the publisher, Hamis Chigundu is one of Uganda's most successful entrepreneurs. He's a philanthropist, uh, almost forgot that, a philanthropist. And uh, he's also uh, someone dealing with... Uh, dealing in real estate management. So he's dealing in a lot of businesses here in Uganda. And that is where he actually comes in and writes such books to inspire you as a young entrepreneur to come back uh, into business alive and to actually get more out of your business. So as we move in through this, this is his second book, however, uh, Reason as the World is Masterpiece. The first uh, book was uh, Success and Failure Based on Reason and Reality. So he was actually saying, uh, uh, success, uh, that is uh, based on reason and reality. Success and failure, based on reason and reality. Because you can only agree uh, that uh, it is always uh, when you fail in life that you can get back on the scoring board and start to reason where you went from. Okay, so this is where we are. The reason as the world is masterpiece. So let's get a look at this. We are heading to chapter 8 of the same uh, book, the same author. And uh, this particular one is The Limitations. Chapter 8 starts with, uh, it is actually themed Limitations. Reason as the world is masterpiece. What does the author say about limitations? It starts with, uh, these imported and imposed colonial education systems lack sufficient and a non-positive result oriented in regard to solving the challenges of African societies today. We study, according to the author, we study to forge solutions to challenges in our societies for the present and future prosperity of our nations. We equally study to bring to light the mistakes of our ancestors to avoid repetition of historical mistakes that would affect our future progress. Now let's look at this. An education system should be designed as an automatic solution formula from the prevailing realistic circumstances of a given society, from the day-to-day -day challenges. The daily aspects of a given society must be the very fundamental pillars on which uh, certain education structures must be designed. An education structure must be a direct path uh, to forging a way forward for a given challenge. The colonial education systems currently operating in most of the African nations are not effective simply because they were not designed to solve African problems. The syllabuses in the current African education systems only prepare African students to graduate into modern slavery uh, only to serve the interests of the Western countries. The author says that if you look at some of the limitations that we have as the Africans, uh, the first limitation he actually notes is uh, a limitation concerning our education system. It has limited us to the roots. So when we say he has limited us uh, to the roots, is the fact that the education system that we have is more centered on the theoretical part of it, forgetting the practical. It is just of let that more vocational institutes are being opened up now. People really have understood that the jobs are limited and you need to start up your own. Because back then it was always get the education first, get the paper, seek for the job. Now currently, we have undermined the education system ourselves. Uh, it is um, the way people are actually getting the jobs. Lack of qualifications, but you have the necessary connections, you go for that job. The one with the papers and the documentations, who is fit to actually go there because he lacks the skills, he doesn't go. And still, you can look at what the education system has done. The author says the education systems teach everything negative about Africa and all the positivities there is to know about everything good in the Western countries. And I totally agree with this personally. And even in the school setting, look at how uh, most of uh, most if I uh, look at how most of the Ugandans and uh, even how most of the students in Uganda love affiliating to the Western world people feel that if I have information about what is happening in the Western world I am fitting in society I'm referred to as a cool student I don't know if you've ever been to a, a university Nobeda Yonga 
no no yogera ngo ruzungu lote luri so uh, fluent like the other students oba tu gamme no ba abantu abize bagamba anti okubye embogo and you speak incorrect english it is here in uganda whereby people will laugh at you saying uno tamanyi luzungu so you become a shame in public for not knowing english kubanga abantu abamba associating anti so society for you to be a successful person we know bango yogera oluzungu kati ne weka nganga anti atamanyi luzungu bamulabanga atasoma uh, so kugamba twage na network nganti wo bato manyi luzungu bagamba yote yasoma amanyo luzungu ye yasoma wo bato manyi luzungu ne obo ina idea jolete ya ya sent bagamba awo tamanyi luzungu utamanyi bya yogera they associate you to be uh, someone who doesn't know what you're speaking about we toina to completely toina byo manyi kubigeda maso munsi so in one way or the other oja kweka nganga munsi muneno uh, ebisere bisinga we are all driven by the colonialists we are still living in the colonial era tulo was anti ba colonialists sibano beba chatu fuga oba tuino ku movingira mu ango ya colonialism echindu no echigendo tu echitu affectinze enyo 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 afenga uh, bana Uganda orenso nganti abantu batu bakutunya olina gama ati na ye a a atamanyi nzu ntera nyo ku example tu twale nyo musomero nga obatu manyi kayimba ka mzungu guba kulabanga fe guba kulabanga a local student your local but the person who is actually saying your local akuli demu Uganda uh, bamzali demu gwanga lino uh, te secho choka obakuli demu gwanga ne bamzali la munine gwanga basadde beba na Uganda wo mubuza tribe ye he or she is a Ugandan but affiliated themselves to cultures that they don't even understand because they want to fit in society so this is where you can definitely see because even our education system has taught us into our cultures are negative the same applies to religion i don't want to tap into a lot of religious uh, situations but you could see in our religious denominations we are bound to get we are bound to uh, to actually get rid of our traditions because the religions have set us in a situation t you're either practicing satanism and you're practicing uh, let, let's say devilism and all that witchcraft in one way or the other but then if you're to look at some of the religious uh, rituals in one way or the other in some denominations you will agree that some of them are also having some certain rituals they follow that look satanic in a way in terms of the, of the biblical teachings but if you hit on that you become the evil person so you can see how colonialism has affected our mentality and our way of doing things According to the author, as we continue with chapter 8, Limitations, Reason as the World's Masterpiece. This imported and imposed education system erased all the good historical facts about Africa and concentrates on the historical African tribal war among the past African society. They claim that everything in Africa was discovered by the colonial masters. You can agree with me that we, all, we have the lakes here and the mountains here we consider them and names that were given by the explorers that we studied in primary we we, t uh, we actually had to answer our exams that who who, who actually uh, who discovered river nile john speak and you're like who discovered lake victoria who named lake victoria john speak and you're like but the lake was in uganda it was already here how can someone discover something they've already found? So they put us in that situation and they realize that once you're driving the Africans in such an angle, they are going to accept. And trust me, we accept it. And we are moving in that shadow. And we are already moving in that direction. And so I guess it is one of the situations as to why we as Ugandans are greatly, not only Ugandans, but the Africans are greatly facing a very huge challenge to survive away from colonial rule. Okay, uh, these, these important education systems only prepared Africans on how best to become modern slaves, not how best they can actually become the best of themselves. As the author is actually concluding with the chapter, he says, when you conquer the brain, you conquer the continent. 
And this is where the colonial masters realized that this is exactly what the imported education foreign systems were designed to do. Conquer the brain and conquer the continent. That come and influence someone's mentality. Change their mindset towards things. And then you're going to defeat them. You're going to govern them. You're going to actually control them. Because when you're conquering their brain, you have conquered uh, their central processing unit. It's just like the computer. Once you switch it off, you've driven everything. Uh, you're going to change the setting of the computer by just tempering the central processing unit. So with the education, they conquered the brain of the African, and now they can conquer the continent in one way or the other. So the author says, what I've written is a personal opinion from a reasonable and realistic point of view, which may be a fact or not, depending on the reasoning capacity of the reader. So depending on how you perceive this information, normally information uh, comes in a way or the other. But how you perceive it changes. The way I receive information or the way I react to information may be different, may vary from how the other individual will perceive it. So that, so that is it. So let's conclude this uh, segment with the ninth chapter, which says post-colonial period. Reason as the world is masterpiece. We are looking at why are we lagging behind as Africans, according to the author. According to the author, a time came when it became really hard for the Western colonial countries to continue with human physical slavery as it became too expensive to capture. Transport and sell human cargo. They faced resistance not only from the slaves they captured as they had started fighting back from equally uh, from some of their fellow Europeans as they looked at slavery as a barbaric dehumanizing act. Churches preached against it and slave traders received a lot of resistance from the Christian church and the religious leaders in general. The idea of human rights was equally on the rise with rapid transformation of the English laws. All these made slavery so hard because back then if you look at the post-colonial era, is because Africans who had traveled uh, to these European countries or to the colonial countries, they realized that these countries were more developed than theirs. And it was them that were offering these services for development. So most of them that got the chance to return home realized that they had to champion the change at home. To see that they end slavery in their motherland, to see that they continuously change the narrative of how things are done. So this is where you could definitely see uh, that with time slavery was changing. So the author also asks, did slavery in Africa come to an end when these African colonial states celebrated independence? The author says, no. The colonial masters only changed the slavery structures and upgraded it from the physical forceful slavery to mental slavery. So we are no longer slaves going out in the various countries to offer services. But we are now slaves in a mental setting. How is it possible? We are slaves in a way that we, we always accept this slavery. We are looking at the European countries. We are looking at um, the Western countries as the only developed people. Or we look at them as the answer to all our challenges. So every time we are comparing our own individuals here, we tend to compare them with uh, the other individuals from the developed countries. Even in the education setting, people prefer going abroad to study. And the funny part is, someone goes abroad to study for a master's a degree or a directorate and then they return to Uganda to ask for a job and then you ask yourself why did they spend a lot of money to study from abroad so but may maybe they have the money anyway you never know 
And then this is the same situation whereby even our, the people in the government will actually take their uh, loved ones or their patients for treatment abroad and forget to actually bring facilities here in Uganda. So that also brings us back to the mental slavery. We cannot appreciate what we have. We still look at the other people. We still feel the other people are the ones that are supposed to set the pace. Even when it comes to politics, we want the other people to help us in, in selecting or in electing our own president. So we want them to actually help us to come here and they, they need to impact to have a say on our economy, on our social setting, and on our life. Something that has immediately had an impact on the development of Africa. So the author says, it was much cheaper, faster, sufficient, and effective with very certain results as compared to physical forceful slavery, where they had to manhandle their fellow human beings with criticisms from everywhere. Thus, it was merely replaced with mental colonialism. It was easier to talk, teach, or mentally convince one into slavery through the likes of an education system or current social media platforms rather than forcefully uh, take them out of Africa to work in Europe. That is why today there are more Africans that have flown to the West willingly to work than they were when they were taken by force as slaves. And uh, it is just evident. So we are in a situation whereby, even here in Uganda, people choose to actually go and work willingly without being forced. You just wake up in the morning with an idea, you look for a visa. People are lining up every day at the Internal Affairs Office to actually see uh, that they continuously go out to seek for the jobs because they believe the other jobs are more paying. But the, th the, the sad part is, whenever they go out, they can't make investments out, outside. They still make investments here. So where is the problem? Are we the problem? Or there is a problem with the education system? Or are we still under slavery? Reason as the world is masterpiece. I'm Joran Paul Sanka. And uh, that's it for today from this segment. Coming up shortly is Andrew Berije with Entertainment Business. Stick around for more of the information coming in from the entertainment world and the money in the entertainment. This is Smart Means Business. Be the first.